हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आवर नेक्स्ट सेशन इन आवर अडेप्ट लर्निंग सीरीज एंड इन दिस सेशन वी लर्न अबाउट बापी व्हाट इज बापी व्हाट इज यूज ऑफ बापी दैट इज स्टैंड फॉर बिजनेस एप्लीकेशन प्रोग्रामिंग इंटरफेस सो लेट्स सी व्हाट इज बापी बापीज आर रिमोट इनुअल फंक्शन मॉडल सो व्हाट इज रिमोट इनुअल फंक्शन मॉडल that we will learn in our rfc lesson so in case if you want to create any remote inner function module then in the transaction code ac37 we have to mark we have to select the radio button that is renewable remote enable module then in this function module act as a rfc next the bapis are used as an standard interface between sap to sap or sap to non sap system to exchange the data in a two way communication method that is with the help of bapi we can read the data from sap as well as we can create change or delete the data from the sap system and here the sap data is accessed through bor that is business object repository this will learn this what is bor that will learn okay so as i mentioned it is a two way communication this means that from sap or non sap system we can either read the data or we can write the data from the non sap system there are some connectors like java connector php php connector vb connector by making use of that we can directly access the bapi also from the pi po cpi there are bapi rfc adapters are there using that we can access the bapi so next is as we have seen that in the function model we have to select the radio button as remote remote enable model but apart from that if you are making a bapi we have to follow some naming convention standard so if you look at any standard bapi as sap provides several predefined bapis so if you check that you will find that all the bapi name is start with the name as bapi that is bapi take example here bapi sales order credit from data 2 bapi material get list similarly any bapi if you check you will find that all the bapi name is start with this word and also like exporting exporting uh, importing exporting changing and table etc the associate type also we can find with the name is starting as a bapi and for all the custom bapi we have to start with z and then followed by the bapi so this naming convention you have to follow next all the bapi parameters are passed by value only we cannot use here the pass by reference in every bapi we'll find either the exporting parameter or in the form of a table one parameter value as written depending on the or sap release we can find the associate type either as a bapi return bapi return 1 bapi return 2 etc okay so we can call as bapi ret xx so either we can see this in the exporting parameter here for bapi underscore material sale we can see the return in the exporting parameter and for credit sales order we can find that return parameter in the tables we don't use exceptions in the bapi because exceptions we generally trigger in case of any error but in case of bapi we pass all error message success message warning message in this return parameter by default like default exceptions are there like system failure and communication failure but we don't use other exceptions in bapi rather we focus only on the output table data in return so let's have a look at the fill detail of the return structure so here first field we can find as a type in this type we'll get either s that is success e for error 
W for warning, I for info, etc. In the ID, it is a message class and then a message number. As we know in SAP, whenever any success message is there, error message is there, we make use of message class that is SC91 and we also assign the message numbers to different messages so that we can find here. So for check the status of MAPI whether it is success or error, we have to read this written parameter with this type. If it is S, then success, otherwise the remaining one. Now, so whenever the BAPI is executed successfully without any error, then we have to call one more BAPI that is BAPI transition come in, which will end the transition and save the changes to database. So here you can see BAPI underscore transition underscore commit. So initially, when we execute the main BAPI, that will buffer all the data. It will not update into database. After success, we have to call this BAPI transition commit and then the changes will reflect in the database. And in case of error, to roll back all the changes, we have to call BAPI underscore transition underscore rollback. This will end the transition and discard all the changes. Now the important point. As I explained, like in the function builder, we have to mark the BAPI function model as remote enable and also we have to follow the naming convention to create a BAPI. But the important part is here, BOR. So all the BAPIs are defined in the business object repository. And the transition code for this is SW01. Here all the BAPI are defined as a methods of business objects that carries out specific business functions. So what is meaning of business objects? In SAP, as we know, we have different models like material management sales, etc. And inside sales, we have purchase order, purchase equation, etc. So all these like purchase order, sales order, material, employee, we can call as the business objects. Here in this SW, O1 transition code, we can see this BUS2012 as business objects and this, this is defined for the purchase order. And here in the methods, we have to assign our BAPI, that is remote inner function model, which we create through SC37. Now, as I explained here, like all the business objects carry out some specific business functions. So what are those functions? So here we can see for this purchase order, here we have get items, release, get list, change, create from data. So all these are called as a business functions, okay, which are responsible to perform particular tasks, like to get the data, to change the data, to release the purchase order. Okay, and here we can see the flag. If it is green, that is release. And when it is red, then we have to check the status. Most of the time it is absolute or with some messages, we have to check that. Transition code to see all the standard BAPI is BAPI. In the command field, we can enter transition code as BAPI. Then we can see this screen. And here we can use in two way, either in the hierarchical form or the alphabetical order. So here we can see different models like sales and distribution and inside that we can find out sales order and inside sales order we can see different functions like create, change, etc. And for every functions we can find one function model is assigned. Like here we can see BAPI sales order create from data. So this is the one function model which is assigned to perform the create operation of sales order. Like this for every functions change, we can find a different BAPI. For get list, we can find a different BAPI. Now what is the main difference between RFC and a BAPI? 
RFC is created through the function builder transaction code SC37 as remote enable function and we can use directly with RFC name through SAP or non-SAP system. This means that here for example we have one RFC Z demo underscore RFC. So this we can call directly with this name either from a SAP system or from any other system. Now the puppies are first created with function builder by following the naming standards and after that it is important to register in the BOR that is business object repository and the, all the BAPI method must be of release status or implemented to use for the communication. In case of RFC, we don't have any option to set as a release or unrelease. But in BAPI, we can find that. On success of BAPI, we need to call the BAPI transaction commit and on failure, we have to roll back. And last, like BAPI, we can call through directly name or with the business object through the legacy system. Here take example like BUS2012 is the business object for purchase order and here I am calling through the method. So instead of like calling the BAPI name like BAPI underscore PO create or change we can call the BAPI with the business object name and its method. So let's log into SAP system and check the transition code BAPI how we can search any BAPI and see the documentation. So here after logging to SAP system we can enter decode BAPI and after that we can see this screen here we have two, app, two tabs either we can sort in a hierarchical way based on different modules or we can sort is in the alphabetical order. So take example here, I want to search the BAPI for the sales process. So we can navigate to the respective module, sales and distribution. And here, based on requirement, I'm going to sales, then sales order. And here we can see different functions of sales order, like change from data, create from data, okay, create with, get list etc and for every functions here we have one function model for every BAPI we can see the complete documentation here which will give the detailed functionality of this BAPI while it is used we can also see the details of parameter what are the different parameters of the BAPI which are mandatory okay here we can see all the details of the BAPI like mandatory entries okay so order header in document type sales document type sales org etc so here we can find the complete documentation of the BAPI how it is to be used and this is the method like create from data to object is sales order if you double click here this is the SW01 transition code this is the sales order and ID for this is BUS2032 and from here if you double click this will open the function builder that is SC37 here we can see remote enable those are the importing parameters to the BAPI here we can find out what are the optional and the mandatory parameters so order header in here is the mandatory and see all the names of associated type are starting with BAPI. Here we can see the exporting parameter, tables, no exceptions because all the error success message will get in this return. So once the sales order is created, the sales order number will get in this exporting parameter and remaining details we can see here. And this is the source code of the BAPI. Okay, we can also check the documentation from here. We can see the complete documentation of the BAPI from here. Fine. So
So like this way, before using any BAPI, first go through the documentation and note down all the details. After that, based on our business requirement, you can use the BAPI either in program, either by creating a custom RFC. Inside that, we can again call this BAPI. We can use for business process automation. We can use this in the REST API. We can use the BAPI in the OLTA services. So as an ABAP consultant, the BAPI, having the knowledge of BAPI is very important. How to consume? As I mentioned, there are many BAPIs which are already developed by SAP and released for use. So before, for any requirement to perform some business object functions, like credit purchase order, chain purchase order, search in this BAPI transaction code is if is there any suitable BAPI which we can use directly. So knowledge of BAPI is very important as a web consultant. If you're working in an implementation project, then we need to migrate the data from legacy to SAP system. Thereby making use of BAPIs, we can upload the data in bulk, whether it is material upload, customer upload, order creation, sales order creation, production order creation, okay? Also in the support project to perform some activity in the mass and for integration in the REST API OLTA services. So we can make use of BAPI in many places, mostly for the integration or the process automation. So this was a theoretical demo of BAPI. For the next lesson, we'll learn how to make use of BAPI in programs and other objects. Thank you.